Shalom. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom, Chavarim. This is Ras Ayodonis Tafari. This is Yadin Ben Chayil right here, here, here. I'd like to follow up on this right here concerning what we have heard um, from Run. Right? Give thanks, Ras Elijah Tafari. Reform United Nations now. R U N Run. Um, we had a little dialogue recently, and he brought forward something to um, the executives. Um, um, the executive committee, should I say, of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated concerning um, the state of Israel, right, having a presence at the African Union. Um, this might be temporary, it might be for a, a year, you know, for a year and everything like that. You know, it might be on a kind of, um, how can we say, it might be on a kind of a, a yearly, like a trial basis, what they call a trial basis. And it was kind of interesting. And, you know, there were some other reasonments, you know, some other reasonments that went along with that as well. Right. But here we're showing Prime Minister of Israel, Golda Meir, and the Emperor of Ethiopia, uh, Kedemawi Hala Selassie. Now, it's a very good book. Some of you all know that we have mentioned this book before. And I don't think I have a, a copy of it right here, you know, in our pre-prepared. So let's go from our previous recording. Those of you all who are checking that out, you'll see we touched on bless and bless and bloodshed, that whole uh, connection right there. Um, it shouldn't be these things, but let's do this right here. What is the book called? Alliance, Alliance, right? Um, Alliance and uh, Alienation. Right, alienation. Now, yes, yes, I right, let's go to this right here. Um, just thought to just share this particular book. Also, hopefully, our brother, um, Ross Elijah Tafari, and all the members, the Ross Tafari, and other members of Run Reform United Nations now will check out this particular vlog. This is just a kind of a suggestion, a recommendation. If this is already, um, if this is already kind of earmarked and set to go through, it might already be already happening right now. This particular book right here by Haggai Ehrlich is a very good book. We will highly recommend it. Um, it's a book that we've read it and we've gone over parts and studied it because there's a whole aspect of um, the King of Kings of Ethiopia, the Conquering Line, the Tribe of Judah, the State of Israel, and even the subject matter of we, the black Jews, of the line of the tribe of Judah and we the beta Israel we the beta Israel the West right because we have our brothers over there the black Jews of Ethiopia the beta Israel of the East as the prophecy says we will be scattered to the four corners of this earthly plane so that basically means that you won't just find us in just one region of the world right but Ethiopia right and the Israelites of Ethiopia well that right there being prophetic but also being special in the sense of not all of Israel would go into captivity because uh, Yahuwah, Jehovah, would never lack a man, right, to sit upon his throne, right? He would never lack a man to sit upon his throne. So there will always be one to, you could say, hold place for um, the greater David, the greater son, right? But here, this particular document speaks about the relation between Ethiopia and Israel, until their dramatic severance in the aftermath of the October 1973 war in the Middle East revolving around issues of regional strategy as well as of ancient religious concepts of identity, right? For Haile Selassie's Ethiopia, Israel was centrally important. Let's go right here to Google Books for a moment and to get a little bit more on this. Was centrally important. The book follows, right, and we're zooming on this right here. The book follows where we follows these relations as they develop along the modern history of what's called the Middle East, so called, and Africa. We call the Middle East Far East Africa. Take note. The Middle East is Far East Africa. Yes? Far East Africa. Right? The, you know, we have East Africa and the Far East Africa is the Middle East going all the way up to where the ancient Ethiopians have had influence, Mesopotamia, Ur of the Chaldees, that ancient Tigris Euphrates River Valley. Anyway, and as they were influenced by ancient Christian, Islamic, and Judaic um, legacies, 
it's um it says right here it's an attempt right it's an attempt or rather it attempts to reconstruct the complex relations between the two states right so let's just do this right here we'd like to see if we can right bring this up front and center so when we're talking about this we can just um yeah there we go a snapshot of that right there so that's the cover of the book right there i don't know if we can download to get a good uh snapshot of that now there was one version of the cover that seemed to have had a typo right we we got an actual copy doesn't have that typo right but i think there's another this is the cover of the book right here right um let's just download and it's very very interesting because it kind of helps us to really identify ethiopia's ancient roots over there and also the connection with the israelites of ethiopia as well so that's the that's the document right there or, or right here it's kind of small right there we prefer actually you know what we just showed you right here this is a little bit better because you can see it front and center all right let's see if i can just move this up there we go all right yeah front and center you can see it front and center that's the book right there i would say it's a must not just read but study alliance and alienation ethiopia and israel in the days of Haile Selassie. now there's uh, there's some books that we would highly recommend like we the black jews right by dr ben Yohanan, right dr ben jockinen there's also the black jews of harlem as well so, like how do we fit into this we the beta israel over here in the americas and the caribbean all right this is this is very very we already showed you the flag with the treaty remember the treaty you can check out the other video there's another video we have up on the rastafari jews that shows that before 43 years Right, I think it was 40, 43, was it 43 years? It was, 2000, it was 19, uh, 1903. That would be about 40, 1948. So maybe 45 years, actually, if that, 45 years before the staff in the state of Israel and before they decided which flag, we have historical documentation, photographic evidence that we, the black Jews over here, Right, and the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews were using that same flag, right, with Sion in the Hebrew, and it's even on the treaty documents between America and the Lion of Judah and Ethiopia under Minulik, Emperor Minulik, Dagmawi Minulik. Now, that's furthermore, we got more to discuss on that, but here we like to just give a little commentary on what we heard concerning. Um, you know, concerning the um, the state of Israel having a seat, right? Some sort of representative seat at the African Union. And just a pause right there, just for that to take that in. Now, there's all sort of reaction, but to the Rastafari especially, since the Rastafari, every um, self, when I say self-professed, every one of I and I who say I and I is Rastafari, we have a duty to our namesake to make sure we are up on our studies you know a lot of times we're discussing things like in public that we as Rastafari even among different mansions need to be you know um, looking at what intel what information and making intel out of it collectively doesn't mean we're gonna agree on everything but we should discuss those things before we are always kind of defending I and I name or I and I namesake the man who is assigned and seal of the prophecy the conquering line of the tribe of Judah how the Selassie the first or even ones and ones that talk about contradictions of the Rastafari there's no contradiction of the Rastafari there's only con contradiction, perhaps, of some Rasta, you know, some Rastas and the sons and daughters. The Rastafari is Kanamawi Hada Selassie. So that book is very important information, you know, that, you know, that we have to, that we have to have, right? And because and, a lot of us will, will say things, but we're saying things from our experience. Yeah, yeah, from our experience, you know, yeah, from our experience over here in America and even the black Jewish and Jewish and black relationships that we've had, the good and the bad, and somewhat, some might call ugly, but one brother reminded I, and give thanks, I don't know if it was uh, um, Brother Keith Berry, but he has said, you know, that's only like, you know, the good, good and evil, you know, the good and the bad, 
you know, because the bad basically includes the ugly, you know what I mean? So the good or bad, you know, relationships that we have had and some of our experience. So sometimes we might judge somebody else's relationship with somebody based on our relationship with somebody. Maybe that other person has had a different relationship with somebody because they treat them different because they're somebody else and because of their standing. So we need to understand Ethiopia's ancient relationships in that region of the world, the whole Hamitic and Semitic connection. It, and seeing that a lot of this Hamitic and Semitic talk is rising up and circulating in the black conscious community between like those who are more pro-ancient Egypt and Kemeticists, we call them Kemeticists, right? Or some say Kemetians, <laughs> you know, the Mitzrayi, and those of us who are the Bene Kushin. As Amos 9 and 7 says, Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, the Bene Kushim unto me, O Bene Yisrael? Just a note, a point, Kushim, Kush is used in some parts of the Middle East and even by some of the um, European and Eastern European Ashkenazim and even some of the Sephardim, it's used as a term of derision. In other words, Kushim is actually used in the East over there by even some of the, the, the European, the white Jews, as well as by some of the um, latter-day um, Arabian Knights, <laughs> some of the latter-day Arabs and Arabian people, because we know that the original Arab people were before the Arabs or before Ishmael. Ishmael became an Arab because he joined with the people who were before, and the original Arab people were really Ethiopian, right? Ethiopic black peoples, right? We got that from some of the best um, study of history and also archaeology, and linguistics is what's going to really kill them. They already know this. This is why, if you notice, they always relegate Gutters and Ethiopic and Amharic even. These languages are studied by the scholars. Many of the scholars who have been able historically to decode certain things, even within the Strong's Concordance and other things, they've been studying Ethiopic linguistics and the language. And this is also one reason why they regard it very highly, right? But we ourselves, we've been lagging and lacking on it. But to the point concerning the state of Israel having a seat, you know, at the African Union. To the, um, to the state of Israel, right, and those over there, no doubt ones will get this message, we'll probably try to, we don't know what title or subject we're going to use on the video, so y'all be seeing it now and hopefully it'll be good enough to get one's interest, because this is a very important point, that in spite of all that has gone on, you know, the racism, we got to point out the racism, right? Some of it has been proven manifestly racist against we, the black Jews and black Yehudim and, and Beta Israel and, and even against the Hebrew Israelites <laughs> on that level as, you know, like the African Israelites of Demona, right? We have different communities, right? We call our people ethnic Yisrael because we see the legacy of this culture, this faith, right, coming out of Africa. This is one of the reasons why the, the European Jews, after the Holocaust, they had sought to settle down in Wakanda. I want to let that to sink in for a moment. Wakanda. Now, you might call it today Uganda. When we look at the Hebrew and we write it in Hebrew, what's interesting, and we write it in Hebrew or the ancient Ethiopic glyphs, it could almost be pronounced either or. You know, this is how pronunciation goes, right? Tomato, tomato, different speakers. Some of our speakers in the South, right? The Judahite speakers spoke slightly different, right? They still spoke Hebrew, the same core language, but they spoke slightly different than the Northerners. You know what I mean? Mother tongue and influence is important. But seeing that the state of Israel and um, Abi Ahmed's, well, he doesn't have much, I'm not going to say he doesn't have much influence, but... He, his, his, his official role is the Prime Minister of Mardin, Ethiopia. The Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, the FDRE. Ethiopia presently is not politically considered an empire. The Ethiopians, or as some of us will say, the careless Ethiopians, they lost the empire. It's I and I Rastafari that will regain the empire. Just know. Even if one's laughing off, you're going to see it as a word of prophecy, right? But the careless Ethiopians lost the empire. When we're talking about the alliance and alienation, 
right? And 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 Ethiopia and and Israel in the days of Kedemawi Hala Selassie. We're speaking about a different jurisdiction, a different context, but we're still speaking about our roots, our history. So even if other Ethiopians had turned their backs, right, doesn't mean that we and faithful Ethiopians and those of the royal or the Ethiopian Hebrews should turn our backs. So we want to engage this because the brother, he brought forward his presentation not to seek to articulate his words directly because he is one of the spokesmen and persons and one of the founders of Reform United Nations now. Right? Our brother Ross Elijah Tafari, some of y'all might know his art, connected with our brother Vaughn Benjamin, John bless his soul, rest in grace, rise in glory, speaking about a K Becker. He's done that art there as well. You know, the art right there. So our artist, brother, our fellow soldier here on the front line of truth and rights, establishing the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the government, the establishing of the kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Right? Not, you know, on earth as it is in heaven. And it said on earth, right, is on earth, not in heaven on earth so the work right here is to do this work on the earth so the run hail up to run reform united nations now on this matter concerning the state of israel having some sort of a representative seat at the african union of course you know already there's a whole lot to say on it and just respectfully to even some of the groups like the, some of the palestinian groups this video is not really about that. In other words, this video is not really about that. What we mean by that is we, the black Jews of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? You know, charity begins at home. So we're basically speaking about the Beta Israel, right, of Ethiopia, the Beta Israel, the black Jews who are over there. We're speaking about our other Hebrew and Israelite family. Right? Whether they have come from the continent, whether it's the, the Igbo, the Igbo, right? from Nigeria, hail up to Biafra, whether it's the Lemba people, you know, whether it's many of our other peoples, you'd be surprised how many ones and ones who trace their heritage, right? their ethnicity, and many of them did not go into captivity. So their genealogical kind of um, memory right, is very strong, their cultural practices. They are, for all intents and purposes, part of Yisrael scattered, even on the continent of Africa. Therefore, if the state of Israel is to have such a seat, right, at the at the African Union, right, we the Black Jews, right, need to be put front and center. We're going we're going to call it like that. We're going to just say it as it is. Right. This might also help right, to, um, um, how can I say, improve right, the relations right, from the so-called European Jews who basically are the ones who are, they are at the top. This is the time of the Gentiles. Let's just say it as it is. It's time of the Gentiles. So the European Jews, you know, they're the ones basically that currently hold the cards in the state of Israel. Right? I, I think they should understand that one shouldn't find, well, they say, they say the truth is an offense, but it's not a sin. Right? But we're giving a suggestion or a recommendation. It's similar to the suggestion and recommendation that Kedemawi Hala Selassie, Moa Anbesa, Zem Negeda Yehuda, Aryeh, Aryeh Mi Yehuda, that the line of Judah basically gave to the state of Israel back around in the 1970s, 73, 74. It's the same advice. They did not listen to his advice then. And part of the crisis that has continued to be like a, um, how does HaTorah say? It should be like, um, like a thorn. It's almost like a thorn in their eye. It's like a sneer and a thorn in their eye. It's because they did not listen to the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the occupant of, of King David's throne. And they know a lot much more than they would publicly say because it's a sensitive point. They recognize the claims of his majesty and even our claims are true. But because of this white racism, white supremacy and all that has gone on, it's a very confused. We're in Babylon, this is what the scriptures talk about Babylon. 
But if they are Torah observant um, European or white Jews, you know, and we say it in these terms because sometimes we have to speak blunt, bluntly and boldly in terms of black and white. Yes, to our Rastafari brothers and sisters that might say, well, his majesty says, you know, about not judging people. We're not judging or condemning people. They have condemned us historically over 400 years, right, because of the color of our skin, the texture of our hair, and basically because we, the ones lost now found, are the black sheep of the house of Israel, plainly and simply, right? But now let's move past that. If there's an opportunity to move past that, if the AU is offering such um, access, right, to the state of Israel, then the state of Israel, for its part, should put front and center, first and foremost, those underrepresented communities, right? Such as the Beta Israel, right? The Beta is when I say the Beta Israel, one's known the Beta Israel, the House of Israel, this is how we refer to ourselves, right? The Beta Israel, the black Jews of Ethiopia. Put them front and center. In other words, have maybe even a representation, right? Since they live and have, you know, their right of return. You know, that some of our black people still are wrestling it that they don't want to acknowledge, but some they have acknowledged. And the Beta Israel, um, others call them, quote, Falasha. You know, we say we properly are Falasha because we are exiled so far from home in the Americas and the Caribbean. So Falasha. Thank you for keeping that terminology alive, but it really refers to us, the Beta Israel of the West, you know. But the state of Israel, to the state of Israel, and to also the administrators of the African Union. So this is a message to both the AU and to the state of Israel, right? The inclusion of our underrepresented groups, such as the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, such as the Lemba people, right? Those, especially those who have, have um, um, what we say, citizenship in the modern state of Israel, right? The African Israelites of Jerusalem, especially them, many of our brothers and some of the sisters have served in the IDF, in the army. So they have kind of, as we would say, they pay their dues, as it were. You know what I mean? And you know who's who, as it be. So they should be given this opportunity Right to be the representatives that right there can perhaps smooth over to an extent more work is done and more work is needed to be done and is needed to be acknowledged about the bias treatment and the racist treatment. And in some sense, some people might say, you know, with the sterilization and all that from some years ago, that that definitely needs to be, you know, that definitely needs to be um Address and remedied, right? As His Majesty said, until the least, you know, act of, um, you know, violation, you know, like of human rights and what is right and true, is 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 addressed and remedied. We can't allow these things to go on, and we're not saying that all European or white Jews, you know, have their hands dirty with it because it's some of them who even pointed out that some of these things were going on or who brought forward evidence to verify that the claims of, say, the Beta Israel, the black Jews of Ethiopia, or other groups that were being marginalized or being treated in ways that even many of the white European Jews were surprised at. They didn't even know that some of their people you know, could do some of these things to other people, especially black people. And we know the situation is very sensitive over there, right? That's why I said to the Palestinian people and also because some of our people will defend the Palestinians, right, in that particular situation over there than defending themselves. And we don't think that that does us any good or even the Palestinian cause any good. The Palestinian cause is not our first cause, right? But we do understand and we do um, commiserate, let's put it like that, you know, with all people who suffer. Many ones and ones know how we've spoken about even the, the Nazi Holocaust and the Holocaust thing. Some say it didn't happen. Some say it did happen. From what we know, we know that it did happen, right? And many of those who suffered were also black people. You know about the black Holocaust, 
right? There's the documentation, the evidence, firsthand witness, other information that have been suppressed, right? And therefore, for the best of what can be the black Jewish so called relationship. But we're changing all that up, right? When you say black Jew relationship, you must be speaking about black people who are not Beta Israel. Because if you recognize who we are as we recognize who we be, then it would be basically, you know, a black and, you know, a black Jewish and a white Jewish relationship. You know what I mean? We can, we can bring it up to that level. And then the racial levels, you know, can be more, more better addressed. Because we don't blame European Jews who, according to some of their best scholars, converted and accepted Judaism or what they took as being said such in 740 AD. Our roots go deeper than 740 AD. But then even HaTorah says to us, right, you know, to do for our brother, right, as well as, you know, the stranger and the settler and the sojourner, right? So, this is what we want to basically say on this particular matter. We'd like to get into some more details of it, you know, but not really prepared to go into the fuller details, but just to share some of the basics right here. Here, here, here. So right here, 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 just to sum up, right here, 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 the book Alliance and Alienation. I say it's a must read and a must study, right, for every Beta Israel, every Hebrew, every black Jew, every Hebrew Israelite, you know, no matter how we might call ourselves, we are all pointing to the same roots, the same, we say, groundation. So our recommendation to the state of Israel, right, especially seeing that many ones and ones who we may consider to be black Jews or black Israelites or Israeli, they come from parts of Africa and there is certain connection with Africa. We know that when the, um, the Jewish uh, World Federation, right, when they were seeking to get a, um, like a land, they were looking at Uganda. Now, Uganda is the same place they call Wakanda in that Panther movie. Now, I point that out because it goes very deep, right? So when you understand the background, what only the studious and the studied know you recognize why even some of the things that go across as entertainment, right, is actually, um, is deeper than that. That's not the point here. Our point here is to recommend that they put the Beta Israel or the Israelite, the, the Israeli, the Africans, the black people, basically the black people forward in that representation at the African Union. Right? Especially those who clearly have African links as well as Israeli and Israelite identity as the representatives. It's the same thing that European Jews would do if they had a situation in Germany or Europe. Right? And they might have certain Ethiopians in the government. They might use them to, to, to represent. Right? But ideally, for example, in Russia, if there's a situation with Russian Jews, there's a lot of... Um, um, Israelis who have their origins out of Russia, they would basically go to them to consult. So to keep our people on the forefront, right, of what's going on, right, and to also, you know, lock down and clamp down, right, on the racists among their own people, right, because it's jeopardizing everything that the Torah observant people, right, you know, amongst the European Jews and other Yehudi, Right, have in mind because people don't really recognize that um, it's because the white Jews basically were white in a white world that when they spoke about being Jewish, they was accepted. But we as black people, when we say that we are Jewish, in spite of having a plethora of documentation, now people may say, "Well, y'all are y'all are West Africans, y'all are Bantu, or whatever kind of nonsense some of these idiots would say." But let's look at the Beta Israel of Ethiopia for a moment, right? Everyone, even European Jews, know that their Israelite, you know, um, association goes way back, know the story of Ethiopia with the Ark of the Covenant, with the Queen of Sheba, King Solomon. Whether ones want to dismiss it, they try to dismiss it as legend because if they were to accept it, right, as it was accepted for thousands of years before this modern time, it would also force a better... Uh, 
a better unity. Yes, I'm speaking about unity, right? But it's not unity begging anything, right? We're not begging for this. We don't have to beg to be who we are. So we're just recommending that ones and ones put the black, you know, Jews and Hebrews and Israelites who are already there in the state of Israel, right, at the forefront of the African Union representation. At the same time, they will be able to understand some of the better things, right, that they have experienced in the state of Israel, but also will be able to bridge a bridge that y'all can't build this bridge, right? Y'all can't build this bridge. If you force this bridge, right, not only will you lose certain things that y'all have been working on, right, in the sense of being Torah observant. And notice how I always use that terminology, Torah observant. Right? <laughs> because otherwise, you know, we already know that the captivities of Israel occurred because we was not Torah observant. Right? So therefore, you know, even if some would refer to some as Edomite, it says thou shalt not abhor, right, Edom. Right? And Edomite, you know, don't abhor because he's our brother nor the Egyptian. But put our people front and foremost, there's many ones who are well qualified, I'm sure, to represent the state of Israel interests, as well as to represent their own black, African, we could say, you know, continental, you know, heritage as well. And that can be, you know, the real key, right? And of course, after that, or along with that, it's us in the West, but that's a message more to the AU. To the African Union. Since the African Union already has included us in that sixth, what they call the sixth, um, 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 what they call the, the, the sixth region. We're part of that sixth region, right? Part of that sixth region. So there's many different communities, right, of Israelites, right, and Beta Israel on the continent, right? The state of Israel being represented at the AU has a very significant opportunity right, to at least provide a new context right, to address some of the previous, um, you know, the past. This is an opportunity. This is like when His Majesty gave the direction instructions right, to the Israeli government after the Six-Day War and it was totally ignored. Right? And that caused basically a lack of peace for until the present time, more than 40 years. Right? More than 40 years, ones have been struggling. Right? And you cannot amputate parts of the body, you know what I'm saying? And expect the body to still be healthy, right? Or still represent the better interests right, of the body. Right? So, with that being said, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, um, you know, Shalom Chabarim, Shalom Lehitarot, a little bit more on this as well, right? This will give the communities that do have roots, right, deep roots on the African continent, an opportunity to play a vital role in the area of diplomacy linking with the continent. If European Jews tried to take the, the, the head, the leadership of this as well, already there's a lot of vibes, historical vibes you know, um, that kind of harp on, you know, what may be racial things done. And I'm not even addressing that in this. That's a whole thing. Others have addressed it. And when I see some of the um, European Jews in the state of Israel being the exposers of what their brothers, their ethnic European Jewish brothers and sisters have done, right, racially, we don't even have to say no more about that right there. You know what I mean? It becomes, you know, teshuva. It becomes a time of teshuva. You know, teshuva. You've heard of teshuva. And this will be a great way of doing teshuva right, as well. All right, so anyway, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, shalom, chabarim, shalom. This is Hebrew name, Yadin ben Chayel Ras Yadinos Tefari. Yaden ben Chayel L.O.J. Yehuda Moan Besa Machiber Arye Mi Yehuda Shalom Chabarim. Yes, I be well.